fuck did I do this? I... I don't even understand how this could happen. <gasps> Yay! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is me, your pretty pigtailed advocate for chair shots and dirty thoughts, here with a wonderful another edition of The Sinful Sevens. This edition is actually a little bit of a, a departure from the previous two. The previous two were involving music. This one's going to involve movies, another one of my terrific passions in life. So this is my top seven favorite movies of all time. So it was really difficult to choose a top seven um, and I'm sure later on down the line either something else is going to come out or I'm going to be exposed to something else and I just realized I'm going to have to change one of these. Holy crap. How did I forget? Okay. Okay. I've made my decision. This is a hard one. Um, okay, so let's get started, shall we? Number seven, Underworld. Now, Underworld uh, has had mixed reviews amongst uh, most of my friends. Um, it, it, to, by today's standards, the CGI doesn't hold up as much as I would like it to, but it's still a fun thrill ride. I love every aspect of that movie. Um, Occasionally I just I have this thirst for an action flick that's just kind of like crazy and unbelievable and this does it. Um, it is action through and through. Um, the love story is really underplayed, which I like. I can't do the whole sappy chick flicks. Just I can't grasp onto them. They don't they don't catch me. Uh, and Underworld is perfect. It is mostly action. It is based on uh, the world war between vampires and werewolves in a modern day recent rendition. Um, Kate Beckinsale is absolutely stunning in this role. I mean, she's beautiful regardless, but I just, I think she fit the role of Selena so well. She's gorgeous, gorgeous through and through. Um, and I have huge, huge, huge crush on Lucian. Um, I, I've actually kind of looked into this because I was curious if it was just Lucian the character or if it was the actor and it's just Lucian the character. Uh, the actor doesn't do it for me unless he's in Lucian garb. <laughs> I'm weird. Um, it just that the whole movie perfect. I actually loved every movie in the series. I did not see the most recent one, um, but the first initial trilogy. Huge fan of all of them. Um, even the third one, which is the prequel, uh, I loved that one as well. So, uh, gotta give it to that one. All right, number six, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now, I would typically put this one a little bit higher, but Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder ruined this movie <laughs> if it wasn't for the fact that Gary Oldman carried this well Gary Oldman and Anthony Hopkins both did such a stellar job in this movie and the direction was done so well I, I think if it wasn't for those two aspects this movie would be much lower um, but God, Keanu Reeves Ooh. <sighs> He was not a right fit for this role, but it was the 90s and uh, they wanted their star performers and at that time he was a star performer. Let's stop naysaying. Let's go ahead and look at the positives of this movie. What it does right. Gary Oldman. He is a god. He is my favorite actor. Uh, he, is, he transforms into every role he does and this is a prime example of this because he, he goes through all the different phases of Dracula and, and he owns each one of them perfectly but the pacing of the movie was perfect um, it just it was so beautiful I love that movie all right, uh, number five. It's taking a minute because I just changed the list last minute and it's throwing me off. 
<laughs> Number five, Interview with the Vampire. Uh, so the Interview with the Vampire was the film adaptation of another vampire book, uh, Anne Rice's Interview with the Vampire following the story of Louis and Lestat um, and I gotta say I am not a Tom Cruise fan I don't like anything he's ever been in I don't like him as an actor I don't like him as a person but in this movie he owned it he was Lestat he is Lestat like I can't when Queen of the Dam came out, it was very hard for me to break what I knew of Lestat because Tom Cruise really killed it in this movie. Um, hey, just what can you say about this movie that hasn't been said? Um, it has just the right amount of dark humor. Um, it has a love story. It has the foreboding torture that Louis has to go through becoming a vampire, which I gotta say, that was my least part, favorite part of that story. Not just the movie, but the story, because you know, him as a character, he was very reluctant to be a vampire after he made that decision, and he was just whiny and bitchy and gah. I hate that. I really do. I just that that was the only thing I didn't like about that movie um, and, and that story because obviously he was that way in the book. But just I just wanted him to be like, shut up. So uh, Kirsten Dunst, uh, very young. I think she was like nine or ten. She played her role, um, and she was just phenomenal. She was like one of the only child actors that I can deal with, let alone really just being just incredible in this movie so um huge huge fan uh let's see i'm on number four rocky horror picture show uh i love the rocky horror picture show this is one of those movies you can put on in any mood at any time you will sing along with every song and it will take you out of whatever funk you're in um i i know the entire movie back to front by heart because i've seen it thousands of times <laughs> um so yeah a uh, big big fan um i mean really what can you say that again has not been said um the musical numbers the the story um the just the themes that god tim curry is a genius um i, I mean everybody in that movie was perfect at their role um it, i mean one of my favorite characters in that entire movie aside from dr frankenfurter and Rifra, um was uh meatloaf's character eddie um i loved his part i mean it was a very brief Part, but he he did such a good job and I was like I was into it it's one of my favorite songs in the entire movie is uh, when Eddie is introduced um, and uh, yeah I'm just huge fan um, Tim Curry plays the part perfectly I don't think anybody else could have played that part ever in existence I know that there is definitely uh, play adaptations I'm sure those people are lovely but no one will replace Tim Curry as the perfect Dr. Frankenfurter and uh, if you have seen it then you know this already and nothing I say is going to uh, be news to you <laughs> um, let's see what number was I on I think I'm on number three. We're gonna go with number three. Um, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. I love this movie. Uh, what's funny is when Scott Pilgrim vs. the World came out, I had seen the previews and didn't think anything of it. I was like, another Michael Sarah movie, great, because he was everywhere at the time. Um, and I, of course, everybody was talking about how great it was, and I was like, I roll. Anytime a movie gets a whole lot of recognition and is in like news feeds and everybody's talking about it and it's their favorite movie, um, the hype immediately makes me want to hate it. I am one of those people. When everybody is talking about a film, I will wait longer and longer and longer to see it, if I see it at all. Um, so that one was getting a lot of hype and I was like, and somebody was like, oh, they reference game, uh, video games. And I was like, I, that's been tried before and it has not been done well. 
<laughs> so I made no efforts to see this movie. And then one day I had nothing going on. Um, I was flipping through the channels and I stopped on HBO and there was just this really interesting thing going on. Uh, I think it was the scene of... It was a scene where the actor boyfriend uh, was like grinding down a rail and blew up. That's the scene I started on and I was like, what is this movie? And I kept watching. I watched it to the end, but I was like, man, I want to see this whole movie. This was really fun. And then I got to actually see it from start to finish. Fell in love. The game references are so well done. Um, it Michael Sarah plays that role perfectly. That was the best role for him. The fight scenes were on point. And I actually found out why the fight scenes were so on point. Uh, Jackie Chan's uh, fight choreography team actually did the fight scenes for Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which is why they're so awesome. Um, I loved the characters. I loved the character development. I loved all of the actresses and actors. Not a single person could have been cast differently. Everyone was cast perfectly. Uh, I then discovered the graphic novel after the movie was released, um, and I think they did a bang up job creating these characters. Um, I, I'm a fan, fan, fan. I will watch that movie over and over and over again and never ever get tired. So if you have not seen that or the hype killed it for you and you decided not to see it, it is worth watching. It is worth watching multiple times because like after the second time you'll notice something that you didn't notice the first time and oh, and so on and so forth. Um, I can't even name a favorite scene. There are just so many great ones. Um, so that is one to check out for sure. Number two, The Ugly. This beautiful film is a psychological thriller from New Zealand. Uh, it is really hard to find. <laughs> Luckily, um, when I was in high school, uh, this guy that I was in like one of my random classes with um, came over to hang out one day. He's like, I want, I want you to see this movie. It, it floored me. And uh, this was in the time of VHS, back, way back yonder. Um, and as soon as he showed it to me, oh my God. Whew. This film is so beautifully done. Um, it, it's lots of um, chaos and, and back and forth, and you're kind of delving into the psyche of a serial killer. Um, and uh, so you see some of things that happened, and then it flashes back to when he starts talking about it. And they do this brilliant thing where they combine the scenes. So you'll be looking at the scene in a bar, and then all of a sudden, the guy in the flashback in the bar is in the shackle, the shackles that he is in today at the mental ward. And it just so beautifully done. The cinematography in this movie is so incredible. It's just perfection. It's another one of those films that you have to see multiple times or, or not see something, and you're going to miss all these subtle things. Um, there was a, a scene, uh, and I'm not going to spoil too much, but there, there's a scene near the beginning of this film um, that I totally did not pick up on uh, until. I, I want to say like the fourth watch through, um, it, it, it was definitely very subtle. Um, and as soon as I noticed, I was like, <gasps> Oh my God, there's lots of those moments. Um, it's there. It's uncomfortable where it needs to be uncomfortable. It, it's spine tingling where it needs to be spine tingling. It, it literally makes your jaw drop frame after frame. Um, I, I cannot say enough about that film. Um, luckily, I have it on VHS and DVD. Um, DVD was really hard to come by, so if you guys do see The Ugly anywhere, get it. You will not be sorry. I promise you. Um, it is it's one of the first and only films that made me go, oh, I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, you have to check it out. I don't want to give too much away because it's really a beautiful movie. Um, and don't be discouraged if you watch it more than once and you're still kind of lost because it's, it's almost like one of those movies that's kind of open into, to interpretation. There is no direct ending to that movie. Um, and you kind of are left wondering, wait, what, was that real or was the other part real? I don't know life anymore. <laughs> Uh, it is so thought-provoking and so beautifully done. 
such a huge fan of that movie. I, you know what, just for shits and giggles, there's two movies that almost made the cut. So these are my honorable mentions, Kung Pao and Nightmare Before Christmas. So honorable mentions, out of nowhere. Number one, this will always be my number one movie. Always, always, always. Nothing has dethroned it so far and I don't think anything ever will. The Crow. The Crow uh, is a cult classic at this point. It bombed at the box office back in like 93, 94 when it released. Um, God. Again, what can I say about the movie that you do not already know? Um, I will tell you that, again, I'm not in chick flicks and I don't cry at movies. I'm not an emotional person, but every single time I cry at the ending scene of The Crow. Every time. <laughs> I cannot help myself. So um, uh, any movie that can make me do that, uh, again, because I am not that kind of person, is a gorgeously done movie. Just all of the villains in this movie are absolutely perfect. Oh god, uh, some of my favorite scenes. I, I'd say one of my favorites, there's a lot, but one of my favorite scenes is when T-Bird is being killed. Um, he's getting strapped in the car and uh, Brandon Lee, of course, the crow, um, he's strapping him into the car uh, with duct tape and the entire time T-Bird is freaking out. He's like, I saw you die. People don't come back. And he is just, he's nervously crying and talking and just rambling. And it's like, you feel the desperation and, and the fear of that character so much in that scene. Um, not that you feel sorry for him, you almost kind of get this sick satisfaction knowing that he put them through so much and he's finally getting his and he is not okay with it. He is not handling it well. <laughs> The final scene um, with Michael Wincott's character, Top Dollar, um, when you know, they're fighting on the top of the church, and um, I'm not going to spoil it in case you've never seen this movie, because if you haven't, you're going to do that, okay? You're going to do that. You owe it to yourself. Um, some of the subtle things about this movie um, that I didn't actually even know uh, as a fan who watched it when it first came out. Um, the the whole like color scheme of the movie is exactly the way it is in the graphic novel. Um, so in the graphic novel, all of today's scenes are in black and white. Now they didn't go full black and white just due to creative differences while creating the film. Um, like it, it's basically what Sin City is. Uh, they tried, but people disagree, but whatever. Um, so all of like the modern day scenes are in mostly black, black and white. And then all the flashbacks to a better time to before he died and you know, all of that, those are all in bright, vibrant color, warm, glowing color, because that was when he was truly alive. And then after he died and had to, you know, go on this renegade vindictive, uh, you know, killing spree, this is that dark, gritty time. And it, it was so subtle and I totally didn't pick up on it until I watched like the behind the scenes filming of it. Um, uh, Brandon Lee's, uh, you know, passed away during the creation of this film. So they had to use a lot of camera work and tricks and, uh, you know, deleted scenes and all kinds of stuff to um, finish the movie. Uh, and it, so it's iconic for that reason as well. Um, but for the most part, this movie was just beautifully done from start to finish. I have yet to find a single flaw with this entire movie. And I've never been able to say that about any movie. So uh, yes, The Crow will always be my favorite. Um, oh, case in point, I don't know if you can see this. So yeah, I have the uh, Crow symbol from the cover of the movie on the back of my neck. That is how much this movie means to me. So yeah. 
That is my Sinful Sevens, top seven favorite movies of all time. Now these are my personal favorites. I hope that I clued you in on some movies to check out that you had not heard about before. Um, and I would love to hear what you think. Um, so even if you haven't seen some of these and you're about to go see them, um, or if you have seen them and you have your own different opinions, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, just please uh, like and subscribe. I try to do Simple Sevens like bi-weekly, um, but just depends on if I have subject matter to go with. So if there is an idea you have um, for my top seven, let me know in the comments below as well. I love uh, requests because it really helps me kind of uh, think outside the box. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely subscribe, share with your friends, um, check out some of the other wonderful things I do on this channel. If you're kind of liking the look that I did today, I actually did do a makeup tutorial on this exact same look. I will leave that link in the description below as well, uh, along with all my contact information. So as always, you guys are gorgeous, you're amazing, and if anybody tells you anything different, they can suck it. Mwah.